Okay, good morning and good afternoon, good evening to everyone. I am Alejandro Pineda from K University, and today I will speak with you about mapping everyday community life in the exurban areas around Tokyo with a case study in Minamasigara in the Kanagawa Prefecture. So for this presentation, I will speak about the following points. First, we will speak about what is a shrinking city and the context of shrinking Japan. Then, about the rapid growth and decline of the Japanese peripheries, and also the issues and opportunities of these Japanese suburbs, with a special focus in Japanese sprawl and the apparent lack of identity and a structure of it, and the need of urban regeneration strategies to improve the residents' living conditions. Then we will speak about a case study on Miname Sigara and how we try to map the residents' attachment to everyday community spaces. Then we will jump to uh, some discussions and concluding remarks before going to the questions and answers, but I will be later. So first of all, what is a shrinking or declining city? So according to the Shrinking Cities International Research Network, a shrinking city is a densely populated urban area with a minimum population of 10,000 residents that has faced population losses in large parts of its urban fabric for more than two years and is undergoing economic transformations with some symptoms of a structural crisis. And it is a growing phenomenon in a increasing number of countries nowadays. It has a wide range of causes going from the industrialization, but also suburbanization or demographic aging, and a wide range also of symptoms going from physical ones like vacancy rates, derelict buildings, and also more socioeconomic ones like the increasing levels of unemployment. So, and even territorial development, all infertility rates and restrictive immigration policy have given this phenomenon even more in Japan. And the Japanese case is particularly representative of this topic because it's a country that has been losing population and aging faster than any other OECD country since the 2008. And according to some scholars, if the situation continues like this, the Japanese population is expected to decrease like a 20% in the two following decades. And according to them, and as you can see here in the map uh, in red, um, almost 50% of Japanese municipalities will no longer be viable by 2040. And although this topic has been quite popular in the most rural peripheral prefectures of Japan, truth is that this trend affects also Japan's biggest cities, which are also projected to have a 20% population loss by 2050. So you can see here in these maps in red growing areas and in blue the shrinking areas. So even big cities like Tokyo, also Nagoya, or Osaka are going to shrink in the two following decades. And by 2050, the population over 65 years will exceed 30% in the Tokyo area. So let's make a zoom in this uh, Tokyo area here. Here in this map, you can see also in red growing areas and in blue, the shrinking ones. And this area is called the National Capital Region and is one of the most populated urban areas in the world. It has 42 million people which is one third of the total Japanese population, living in only this 10% of the country's surface. And according to the government data, and also to a lot of scholars, peripheral prefectures in this area are going to uh, have the deepest effect of the population in the country. So these peripheries experience a super rapidly uh, urban growth in only three decades during the Japanese economic bubble, as you can see here in light brown color in the map. So truth is that mm, these areas after World War II were expected to be a green belt to restrain urbanization of Tokyo, but the lack of appropriate land use control and of financial resources for conserving the green spaces made them to absorb the growing urban population of the urban cores, and then they underwent uncontrolled urbanization and urban sprawl. So they mix in the urban fabric very different kind of uses like industrial, also residential, or even farming lands. And they, in some way, did not manage to develop an independent uh, identity from the big metropolis near. So um, there is a spongification phenomenon, which is a problem uh, related to this mixture of uses on them, it's about the perforation of the urban fabric by abandoned farming land and the lake buildings. 
So although in traditional Japanese cities and also in Western ones, we have a clear centrality and a, in a certain point, a differentiation between uses. In Japanese sprawling areas, there is an overlapping of these uses from industrial land, farming, residential, etc. So abandonment perforates these different uses in different parts of the city at the same time. So this makes access to urban resources more difficult for the remaining residents and everyday communities life spaces become even more scarce. And the application of traditional regeneration strategies becomes even more difficult because of all of this. So suburban towns are expected to experience the highest effects of the population in the coming decades. But at the same time, there is a lack of information since most of the previous research focus on, peri on peripheral perfectors and the regeneration of the urban course of the biggest cities. At the same time, high speed growth transformed these suburbs into urban sprawl with mixed residential and agricultural areas. So there is an, an apparent lack of urban structure and independent identity on them and are there for the community spaces. At the same time, we spoke about spongification, which are holes of abandonment that makes the application of traditional revitalization strategies even more difficult. So now the question is, how can we design strategies to ameliorate the consequences of shrinkage by vitalizing these local communities? Local governments are nowadays trying to find strategies to revitalize their urban fabric and enhance the quality of life of their remaining residents. But as we saw, the application of traditional strategies is quite difficult in these areas. So we suggest that mapping subjective components of place can help unveil the urban structure of suburban explored areas. So we want to map the attachment of residents to everyday life spaces and identify community spaces which can play an important role in this new phase. So for doing this, I will explain about a particular case study that we carry out in Miname Sigara, which is a city in the Canada Prefecture that you can see here in the map in this, uh, it's in the border of the National Capital Region area. And it's a common suburban city in uh, the Tokyo area. So you can see here a picture of the world city and its urban fabric. Uh, the city was developed around a single kind of industry called Fujifilm that you can see here. And it experienced a super high speed growth and with a 200% of its population increasing in only three decades. So its population peak in, in the year 2000, and since then has been slowly shrinking until now. And is expected to shrink an additional 20% by 2040. So nowadays, the city, and um, since the year 2000, slowly has been experiencing the negative consequences of decline. So as you can see here, there is an increasing number of vacant houses, but also abandoned shops and vacant farming land in the city. And this trend is expected to aggravate even more in the future. So now the city is entering a new phase of urban regeneration and they are trying to find this kind of a strategy for vitalize the local community. So it's in this context that we carried out this project. Our goal was to map the attachment of the residents to everyday life spaces that support the community interaction. We follow a set of semi-structured interviews with 30 local stakeholders and we map it, the location and role of these spaces for them, and also the urban aspects that need improvement in order to have a more complete vision of the city. So you can see here some pictures of this interview with the stakeholders. We interview with uh, 30 of these people, and we try in this interview to um, cover a wide range of ages and also local activities. So we interview with people going from regional promotion to children education or some environmental protection between others. So with all of this process, we obtain uh, like 1,000 places within the municipal boundaries and 80 places outside the city limits. We classify all of these spaces according to the role for the residents. So they are meeting spaces, also places related to exercise, natural spaces, places for uh, that act as, as a viewpoints, etc. And we located 400 urban aspects that need improvement in the city. 
about the specific locations, but also about the world city policies or issues. So first of all, about the places within the municipal boundaries, we check that the most relevant ones are those related to events and formal encounter, like this coming can or community center that you can see here in the picture, but also uh, parks or agricultural land or water courses like this natural area that you can see here. Next, uh, some places related to service like supermarkets like this one, shops and public service, and some places related to the city heritage like this temple, but also some shrines, historical places, places related to art, etc. Also, some restaurants and cafes that play an important role for the community, and in a lesser degree, places related to exercise, viewpoint, or other kinds of places. So with all of this, we made some evaluative maps that the one that you can see here. So here we map <clears throat> all, these, all these places that we located uh, with bigger or smaller cycles according to the number of respondents and with different colors regarding the category of the, uh, of the corresponding place. Also, we map the routes that the residents are following usually in the train lines. <clears throat> So here you can see some of the pictures of the places that uh, we located with this, uh, like the most historical temple of the city, but also the roadside station and also a local supermarket. So about the places outside the city boundaries, we repeat a similar process and we check that in this case, places related to supermarkets and shopping centers are the most prominent. Also some natural spaces in other cities, also some brand restaurants and local cafes, and places related to make exercise in routes connecting cities between each other. Although we don't have a um, example big enough for mapping the world territory, we can see some um, indicators here about the, how the city is um, acting with the neighbors towns. So here we can see also the routes that the residents are taking for going uh, every day to all the neighbor towns and also the kind of spaces that they are consuming outside the city. We also located some improvement aspects that they consider relevant. And the most prominent one is the large amount of abandoned houses and vacant spaces that uh, here you can see in these pictures the top, which could be converted according to stakeholders in community space. Also, the lack of a mid and long-term urban plan for the city and the lack of city and consultation in urban tourist plans. The lack of distinctive local identity and the absence of spaces different from the surrounding cities. Also, the reduction of health service like clinic or shops in some areas delivered from a shrinkage. And also, the poor maintenance of certain public spaces like some parks and forests, like this section of the river that you can see. So I would like to reflect in some useful points that we discovered through this methodology. So first of all, through these interviews, we discovered some smaller places which do not appear in touristic maps, but that are very relevant for community life. So this resonates with the concept of his, of sweet spots, which are places where citizens feel particularly rooted and then they need special care and maintenance. So some examples of this are local restaurants and cafes like this Raku Cafe here, where neighbors sell and prepare dishes with local vegetables, or also small natural places like these ones, which are quite popular between the neighbors during the summer. We confirmed also through this process the high dependency of the car and the little possibilities of informal life encounters for the residents. And in this sense, Community life especially happens in places designed for the meeting, like these community centers. So these places are quite scarce and small in some cases, but they need also special care. And next, although many cities are going from for centralized revitalization strategies, the places that we discovered through these interviews draw several different zones influencing the territory. So these areas can be also an opportunity for revitalization. Also, the road connecting these influence areas offers several opportunities for regeneration, 
They are now in a state of relative abandonment or poorly oriented to car users like here, but recovering some of them for the pedestrian can be a good point for a regeneration strategy. So we check that there is a high demand by the residents of reinforcing the local identity through citizen participation plans to face the climb. And most of the sweet spots, routes, and places that we discover through this process can become the base of future revitalization efforts going on that direction. Five minutes, Alejandro. Okay, thank you. So we have seen how Japan population is expected to significantly decrease and age in the coming decades and how suburban towns are expected to experience the high effects of the population. We have seen also how areas of urban sprawl with mixed residential or agricultural areas need about revitalization strategies to enhance the quality of life of the remaining residents. So through this research, we map the everyday community space in Nemesigara, and although sprawl is usually considered as the void of structural centralities in its urban form, Analyzing subjective aspects in urban sprawl areas can help identify real cluster and structure zone. Also, the identified community spaces that we dis discover or help to discover can be the base of future regeneration efforts. And we believe that the proposed methods can be also applied to other areas facing similar threats, not only in Japan, but also worldwide. And that's all for my presentation. Thank you so much for your attention. If you have any questions or you want to contact me, please drop me an email to this address. Thank you so much.